my lovely possessions. I need more. That's better. But I need more. I said more. Yes. I am happy now. At least for a while. That's me a few months ago. Crazy, right? Let me tell you a story of how I stole 500 bucks from my parents, almost broke up with my husband, and how minimalism has changed my life. I believe in radical honesty, and I'll tell you things just the way they are. I'm not proud of my behavior, and I realize that all the things that I'm going to discuss today are not a real issue compared to many people's struggle to afford food and a roof over their head. But as I struggle with being a part of a consumer society, and I begin to wake up from that painful sleep, I want to share my story with you, and I want to urge everybody to wake up as well, look around you, and realize what actually matters in your life. As far as I remember myself, my biggest issue was overconsumption. That goes for food, for clothes, shoes, gadgets, games, anything that sparks my interest, really. As all things do, it started in my childhood. When I was a kid, my parents were making good money and were buying me everything that I asked for. I had my first computer at the age of 7, and I had toys, sweets, consoles, games. It made me really happy as a child. We went to the expensive restaurants and I would order lots of food, but then I wouldn't even eat a half of it. I wanted more of everything, but the moment I got it, I would lose interest in having it. Then the times have changed. My parents got divorced and I was left alone with my mother. We were not poor, but we were struggling. She had to sell the car, we moved to a rental apartment. I couldn't ask for whatever I wanted anymore, though as I aged my desires were only growing. While I was happy getting even a new gaming magazine, I wanted much more. And that's when I learned my first lesson. I am happy when I have something new and shiny. And that's when my desire and dissatisfaction started to build up. During these times, as a remnant of the previous life, my father was still paying for my private school. It was a type of school where you live from Monday to Friday and only spent weekends at your home. While I'm grateful for the quality of the education I was receiving there, it was difficult for me to fit in with my class. And it was tough on me, since I had to spend with them 24 hours a day, including sharing a bedroom. I felt like I didn't belong there. I was from a regular family, but kids there... They had parents owning huge houses, hotel chains, oil businesses. They were living in a completely different world, and even though I had some friends, they still seemed like aliens to me. I started to become envy. I wanted to live in a large house and not in a small apartment. I wanted to be a part of that elite society that seemed to have different worries and topics to discuss. And that's when I learned my second lesson. Successful people own huge businesses and live in a ridiculously large houses. After some time, I moved to a normal school because we couldn't afford it anymore and I started playing online games. I vividly remember when I was playing one game at the age of 14. It was a free-to-play game, but to be strong, you had to buy items that cost thousands of dollars. Of course, I didn't have that money and I was so upset. I was in awe when I got a chance to talk to people who spent 50,000 in the game and were able to defeat anyone with a single hit. My memory is a bit hazy of those times, but I believe my father was helping us financially, something like $500 a month. And once I told my mother that that money got stolen in the train and instead I went and spent it in the game so I could feel a little bit closer to those elite players, so they would respect and accept me. Of course, now I realize that what I did back then wasn't acceptable. But then, that's how I learned my third lesson. Having money gives you respect from the people around you. It gives you status. Fast forwarding, I started earning my first salary at the age of 19, and I could finally afford things myself. Everything that I was missing for so long now was possible. However, my salary was minuscule, and I couldn't do much with it anyway. That pushed me to work harder, earn promotions, get higher salary, and finally move to Europe to pursue my career. That's when I learned my main lesson. 
if you want to be successful, you have to prioritize earning money over everything else in your life. As we moved to Europe together with my husband, it was the first time we started living together. We moved because of my work and he didn't have one, so I had to sustain us both. This is the worst period of our relationship because I wanted to buy more stuff and I was angry that I have to spend money on my husband instead of myself. Just to think for a moment that I could have lost someone who matters to me so much because of the desire to buy more? That's insane! These lessons, they shaped my 20s, that's for sure. I wouldn't change my past, it brought me here after all. But I can change my future, and these lessons, they don't work for me anymore. Now I'm 31, and I have a good enough salary, so I don't have to worry too much about not having money. The issue is that my spending behavior has not changed until recently. All the lessons that I learned about spending money and success solidified in my mind and picked three years ago as I moved to the US. The US is not a country for me, as I figured out living there for almost a year and a half. But you know what I loved about it? That it's just so convenient to spend money. Of course, there is Amazon, but there are also so many kinds of online shops that sell unique and fun stuff. There was that one place that sent you clothes by subscription monthly. I think you pay 100 or 200 dollars a month, say what kind of clothes you like and your size, and they sent a box with items they chose for you. You can select which items to keep and send the rest back. It was great to have a surprise package every month, so I went ahead and started to subscribe to more services like this. I've ordered a monthly surprise box of beef jerky, a monthly box of pickled food, a box with snacks from Japan, and sweets from Japan, and snacks from Korea, and sweets from Korea, <laughs> it became bonkers. Not only it was an absolute waste of money, it wasn't great for my eating habits either. As COVID started, I gained 20 pounds over three months, so I decided to start exercising at home. I started buying sports equipment. There was hardly any space left to walk after I got dumbbells, kettlebells, yoga mats, pull-up stand and other stuff. I started with a good intention and went full dummy with the execution. I buy new stuff because I'm curious about the new technology and I like the feeling of a new toy. A new iPhone every year, new headphones, new smartwatch, all those things that feel fresh and interesting for a few days or even a few weeks until you get bored. Whenever I choose what to buy, I would always select the most expensive option. iPhone has to be Pro Max. A table in my office has to be six feet wide. A keyboard, of course, the latest model. I don't give myself enough time to even consider it. The search for instant gratification can't wait for me pondering all pros and cons of buying something. Let's say I watch a YouTube video that says how fun is to take the instant photos that get printed immediately and you have a great memory left forever. They say how considerate you become by picking what to capture because the ink is limited. And I would just go and immediately order that camera. I would think that I will create unique and important memories for me and my friends, that I somehow improving myself and my life with this purchase. But in the end, we all know, that is just a waste of 200 bucks. A purchase will not bring you memories and friends. Socializing with people will. The camera is just something that's fun to use for a few days. And then it just gathers the dust in the corner of the living room. And once I stop using something, I never consider selling it or giving it to someone. Many times I would just put it away in the storage room and forget about it forever. So what's the end result? The bursts of happiness when making these purchases? Yeah, but it's so fleeting, it's practically a drug. It raises your dopamine when buying things. And the more you do it, the more you want to keep doing it. But what about consequences? No savings, lots of waste, and all my friends are joking about it now, knowing that I have absolutely no self-control when it comes to making purchasing decisions. This year, I decided that I have to stop and change myself, that I have to consider how my actions impact my life and the life of those who I love, and how they impact our future. And so, I began my minimalism journey. I needed radical changes in my behavior. I couldn't justify a slow transition to myself. I had to stop buying things. 
At first I created a list. I would add all items there that I wanted to buy. I listed all pros and cons and thus I began my mental haggling to convince myself that I need each of these things. I was resisting the urge for weeks, discussing it with my husband, with my friends, to see their points of view. Would they buy this item? Does it make sense to them? I ended up buying nothing from this list, but instead developed a set of rules to determine what is an acceptable purchase. These rules are quite straightforward. If I already have something that serves that function, then I don't need it. Yes, even if a new item serves that function better. If I was able to live without this item for years, why do I need it now? Yes, even if it will potentially improve my life. If I actually need something, then maybe I can buy a cheaper version of it, maybe even secondhand from somebody on the internet. I started being smarter about things that I have and how I can apply them. It became almost like a game for me to figure out how to live with what I have at all times. Of course, given how many things I've purchased over the last years, it is not that hard. It has been three months so far and I didn't make any big purchase. And while it might seem quite a low effort achievement for some, I'm proud of it. But not buying new things was just the first step. I treat minimalism as a mindset, which incorporates many behaviors, habits, and views on life that are crucial to be able to adapt it fully. The second big step was the decluttering of my apartment. I carefully went through each room, choosing what we never use, what we can throw away, what we can sell, and what we can give to someone. There were two main goals I set for myself. Drastically minimize the number of items that we have in each room and create an organizational system for each of these items that remained. I tried to make most of the surfaces empty. Each item now has its own place and I make sure every evening that everything returned to its place. It is absolutely crucial to do it regularly so you keep the apartment in the same state day over day, guarding it from the chaos. But it doesn't stop here either. To fully adapt the mindset, I need to be vigilant daily. I keep looking around, thinking if there are items that we stopped using, or if I kept something last time because I felt sad to throw it away. I decided to sell a few cooking appliances, removed one table from the kitchen because it had no use, and just recently I completely changed everything in my office, moving from having two tables to just one, and optimized all the space that I have available for it to be as multifunctional as possible. The goal is to apply it to every area of your life, your clothes, your dishes, your workplace, even to your bathroom and shampoos you use. I know it might sound overwhelming reviewing everything that you own, but take it one step at a time. After all, your initial investment will pay off by simplifying the rest of your life greatly. Take the clothes as an example. I really love the color blue, so I made sure all my t-shirts are different shades of blue. I have one pair of jeans, two pair of shorts for the summer that are also dark blue. There is no color matching that I have to do. Choosing of clothes is effortless and buying new clothes as well. I know what I need and I only buy it when I throw something away. I use one backpack for everything. I got rid of my Kindle and I read on my phone or just paper books. It seems like I'm losing a lot, but it only feels easier without all these items that I have to think about, charge them and bring them with me everywhere. And speaking of reading on Kindle, it sure looks weird if I take my Kindle to the office bathroom, but the phone is totally fine. To finish off, I'd like to speak about two big changes in how I see the life after starting to embrace the minimalist lifestyle. You have to stop caring about what everybody else thinks about you. Our numerous behaviors influenced by what society expects from us. But you know what? 99% of the people have enough of their own worries and they don't expect anything from you. When we spend too much time on the internet, we build a biased picture where everybody has an opinion about everybody else. When it comes to real life and personal interactions, nobody has time to think how you dress and what phone you have. What matters is what you think and how you feel. If it feels easier to live minimal, then go for it. But if it makes you unhappy, then what's the point? After all, having more money in the bank won't make you happy either. And that leads me to my last and the most important point. Everything you do is about being happy. For the first time in my life, I started considering maybe I don't need to create my own company. 
Maybe I don't need to earn millions. Maybe earning a good salary or someday earning something from YouTube is enough to be happy. That actually blows up my mind. It is so difficult to take a pause and think what is making you happy every day. But what I know for sure, it is not more money for me. Would I be unhappy without a good income? Yeah, I would. But do I need to lose everything else to keep earning more and more and more? No. In the end, the minimalist approach is changing me profoundly. And so far, I'm humbled and I'm loving the journey. It doesn't mean that I will sleep on the floor or I will own only a single spoon, but aspiring to have less and only own what is essential is a wonderful way of life.